so what I wanted to talk about was a project that I started or thought about on like December the 31st, as you do, right? Um, just going into the new year and wanted to really hone in on some of those gaps that I had around DevOps principles, processes, tooling. And I thought, well, there's 90 days from the 1st of January through to the 31st of March. So what I wanted to do was document some of that journey and make it like learning in public is an important thing for me. I've done it ever since I've started my career. So I wanted to do that, especially for this, um, for, for the community and for the audience. So who am I? So I come from, I work at um, Veeam. S specifically, I focus around Kasten, Kasten K10, Kasten Technologies, which is focused around Kubernetes backup. But that's enough about that. They do feature in it at th the very end, but ultimately it's around uh, learning those why, why DevOps, the principles, the processes, and the, the technology and the tooling around that. So uh, HashiCorp Ambassador, so writing content, uh, recording content around HashiCorp products. And I'm going to get into a little bit of the overwhelming amount of tooling that we've got. You s might have s saw it on the, on the first screen. But ultimately, um, I'm a big fan of uh, like community ambassador programs and sticking up or shouting about um, uh, like the, the technologies or the communities that, that mean something, that, that give back to the community as much as um, obviously we're all taking from the community as well from learning, a learning point of view. But a big ethos of mine is that if I write a blog and, and it helps one person, then it's absolutely worth doing. And some of the most advanced blogs that I've done probably get five views and some of the most easy, easy processes like how to mount an NF or how to, uh, how to enable NFS on a Windows 2019 server gets a million views. It's ridiculous. But um, uh, if you, that QR code will take you to the GitHub repository, um, which is for the 90 days of DevOps. But I'll touch on some of the, the whys and wherefores of, of how we got into it. So the why, really, about 18 months ago, I moved into focus on cloud-native technologies within, within Veeam. So I've been at Veeam seven and a half years, focusing on infrastructure, very much come from that infrastructure operations background. Um, and this role change meant I was talking to a lot of different personas. And I'm sure we've all been through that. We've all got a background, where, whether it comes from a dev side of it or whether it comes from that infrastructure operations or cloud. So that role change and focus, although I took a lot of that from a virtualization point of view into what I was doing around like using Terraform to deploy cloud-based workloads and using Vagrant to, to deploy um, like development environments. So I had a bit of an existing knowledge, but there's still missing gaps. And the, one of the uh, examples I used in another talk was like a bit like Swiss cheese. There's like holes all over it, and what I needed to do was like fill fill the gaps up in in there. So I first went around and like there's a hell of a lot of um, content out there, whether it be uh, like video content, whether it be blogs. There's an overwhelming amount of content, and there's also this. Uh, there's also this premise around 100 days of XYZ, 100 days of Kubernetes, 100 days of cloud, 100 days of code. And by all accounts, they've done an amazing job, right? Anyone that's completed that 100 days, fair play to them. I only managed 90, but I thought it, it rang a little bit better as well. So, And someone will come along and do 100 days of DevOps, and they beat me, right? But the whole point of it was was really I didn't want to look at Kubernetes for 100 days or particularly a programming language for 100 days. A lot of the technologies and tool sets that we look at is very much we need the foundational knowledge across a lot of different tools and processes and everything along that. So just breaking it down, there's obviously loads of different resources out there. YouTube, is I'm a massive fan, and I don't know about everyone else, but I became addicted to YouTube during the, lo during the pandemic. Um, ranging from van life videos to all sorts of weird and wonderful technologies as well. But equally, Udemy, and one of the other big premises of, of the repository was I wanted to do it using free stuff. Right? I wanted to do it so that anyone could have access to either the hands-on tooling that I was using or the resources that I was sharing on a daily basis of, this is a YouTube video, go and watch it. You'll learn a lot about it. Here you go. Um, but I think, like many, my 
uh, Udemy account, and you'll see, maybe you can see that the progress on a lot of these account on, on a lot of these courses are zero, right? So I spend a lot of money when it comes up with a Udemy sale, but never use it because I want to use free resources. I want I tend to use free resources because it tends to be more community focused content. It's not a, a, a an ad or it's not a, a paid for bit of content. Nothing against Udemy. I'm sure it's all all good stuff. So. The challenge for me, the 90 days of, of DevOps, is to get a better understanding and a foundational knowledge of the areas of DevOps, of a DevOps, or of DevOps. So that's processes, principles, tooling. I'm going to get sick of saying that. And the big important part of that, I could have done this behind closed doors. I could have watched everything. But again, going back to that community roots, it was around sharing that journey, learning in public, which is very important to me and also to us as a community. Again, that learning in public. So we're never going to be done learning. So uh, like I mentioned, I've come from virtualization, storage background. So I'm now transitioning into this new world of, of automation, DevOps, et cetera. I tend to I come from that writing of blogs, what, uh, tutorials, cheat, seat, cheat sheets. However you learn and can share that out is, is an important way of being able to give back to the community. We all consume a lot of content. Um, also being able to speak at meetups, like having a community angle there as well. And being able to answer questions, whether it be behind closed doors, preferably I'd take it away from Slack and Discord, and I want to do it out in public in things like Stack Overflow and be present there and answer those, those questions. Making YouTube videos, however people consume, and people learn in different ways, right? So whatever it is, like find you're like you all know how you like to learn and what you like to read or or watch so find that and then hone in on what that needs to look like but then also maybe think about creating your own content around that so where do we start i think this is just a, obviously a subset of logos and weird and wonderful tools that we have out there and it's a massive over, it's massively overwhelming. Now, each of us probably are in different roles that are focused on different technology stacks. Mostly, you're going to be probably interested in the HashiCorp um, product stack, but you know that there's a whole ecosystem of um, products and toolings around that. So it becomes quite overwhelming as to what, where do I start? What do I do, right? Um, and generally, that's probably the first place where you jump out the door and you don't, and you just focus on your one swim lane that you need to get done at work, rather than branching out and taking a bit more of a methodical view on, well, where do I, how do, where and, where and how do I start? So how do I learn best? Um, I watch a lot of video content, as I said, about um, being addicted to YouTube. Writing down them, them notes, whether it's using Notion to begin with or using VS Code that I went on, and then that's what ended up being the, the repository for 90 days, but also getting hands-on. So it's not 90 days of blogs. It's actually getting hands-on and getting into it. So watch some YouTube, for example, write down the notes, get hands-on, do something with the technologies that I'm going to get into, upload it to GitHub on a daily basis, sometimes more than one in a day, or we had to play catch-up towards the end because life got in the way, but then share it. If it helps someone, then it's worth it. So, and this is trying to take that complicated image that I first put up and went, well, where do I start? And kind of walk around some of the fundamentals of, I won't put my foot on that cable, um, some, of the, some of the key areas that, uh, that we should consider if we're either first starting, or I imagine that some of us have a tick in some of these boxes already as a foundational knowledge. So if we think about well, what is and why do we use DevOps, so thinking about the principles and the processes and what, what is DevOps and, and how it works. So there's, a, there's actually six days on that because 90 doesn't, doesn't go into the 12, so I had to be creative on how I broke that down. Learning a programming language. Now, I'm not going to be a developer, but I need to understand what my team's writing or at least have that understanding of how it is. So I chose Golang. It's what Kasten k 10s written in. Python's another good example there. Knowing Linux from a basic point of view, again, some of these I took in with me, so I had that. That was the solid part of my understanding. Same with networking, having the knowledge of a cloud provider. I went to Twitter, and it came back with Azure. Obviously, there's other clouds available. Using Git, Git's massive from, a, from a, an infrastructure or, um, 
SRE and a platform team point of view, but it's equally important for developers, containers, Kubernetes as a platform, learning infrastructure as code. Again, I had a background around Terraform, so it was very much an easy, easy win to go through seven days of what is, what, is, what is Terraform, what is infrastructure as code, what can we imagine, what can we get out of infrastructure as code, what are the benefits, et cetera. Um, and all the way through this, like where I can, I've labbed using something like um, VirtualBox on my laptop. So to make it achievable or obtainable for everyone uh, like in the community as well, we don't need to actually go and spend a fortune in the public cloud because not everyone has access to a company credit card and we don't want to have massive bills. So then configuration management around CI/CD pipeline. Um, as much as I got Jenkins up there, you might have seen the Argo CD. So kind of as we went round the journey, we were definitely looking at Kubernetes and then Jenkins more of a traditional, I don't know if I should use that term, but traditional CI CD pipeline, bit of tooling, but then looking at Argo CD from an application delivery point of view within, within Kubernetes. So a lot of these sections, as much as you can go and consume each one of these individually, you could go and like start go through the journey yourself and build out using Minikube for the most part and then deploying all of these different um, aspects to it. Probably the um, two key ones and it allowed me to uh, accelerate at the end of the 90 days because by 90 days and writing over 100,000 words you can imagine and getting hands on. Um, the observability and the storing and protect. So I was able to complete, especially with my background around storing and protecting data. It doesn't matter where we um, where we live, that data is getting more and more important. Whether you're in the platform team, whether you're in the operations team, data is important from that. So looking at that and work, working through some of the processes, and again focusing on that Kubernetes platform. So the big ask from the community is, well, what are we missing? Um, so there's some good, great discussions going on. So this has had a, just shy of 14,000 GitHub stars, which I know is not necessarily a metric that we that we uh, that we go on, but it's the only metric that I really have, apart from also contributors. But the discussion boards are quite um, lively as well. So what did I miss? Now I know that I've missed a lot about security, um, secrets management. I want to include Vault into the next one as well, which is me saying I am going to do a next one, but. The next step for this um, repository as we wrap up is it's going to go to an ebook. Once someone smarter than me can go through and check all the grammar and spelling, then they've also said that they want to do a physical book, which I'm OK with. I'm not going to go through signing each one, though. There's going to be a next lesson. So I want to look at things like serverless. I want to look at uh, get, focus a little bit more into the security around what we think about from a, a, a DevOps point of view and hopefully create some content. What I, my biggest regret was that I didn't hit record on a lot of the hands-on stuff because the amount of mistakes that I made are the same as what we've all made, and we pull out our hair. That's why I'm like this. But the whole point of learning is sometimes by someone else's mistake. And I can make it all look good during a repository and make it all look like, oh, yeah, it was easy. I made everything work. But you'll see as well there are some areas where it went, this didn't work. There's not many, because I went back and persevered and fixed it. But yeah, that's the, that's the key part to it. So just in closing, um, please take a look at it. Um, regardless of where you are on your journey, let me know. Like, Give us feedback as well. Like, I had nearly 50 contributors. Let's just, just go through and check some grammar and spelling. That'll get, get me up to 50. Um, but then, amazingly, that 13.7K, that that's blown me away because that gave me so much accountability that when you get to day 27 and you're like, Jesus, I've written so much already. Uh, but then when there's 5K of, of stars, you kind of got to keep going because that's the accountability. But that's the important part around learning in public and, and giving back to the community is, is that. So with that, I think that's time. So thank you very much.